I don't think she's that good. Uh, you know, she's school is out. Yeah, school is out. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, I don't she, know. She, okay. she, she's not an improviser. Yeah, no, she plays with music and... Um, but she, she, yeah. she can learn it, but she, she doesn't... Yeah, and she doesn't... She hasn't spent time with her violin at all. Oh, ready. Like, we dragged her to orchestra. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like she picks it up and plays. It's just to play. Like, not... Yeah, okay. All right. Well, hey, good morning, St. Mark. Great to see all of you this beautiful Sunday. I hear we're supposed to get a little bit of rain, which, of course, we could, we could use. Uh, I don't know how much is coming, but uh, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday both said uh, some kind of percentages. So we'll pray the Lord waters the earth, because uh, I know you're probably tired of all having to water your flowers and gardens and grass and everything else you got to water. So Today, going to be spending a little bit of time in Matthew chapter 9, the call of Matthew, or Levi, and the words that Jesus spoke to the Pharisees there. Uh, our children will be singing, and we have all kinds of great things going on today. So as we begin our worship, I would ask that you please rise as we make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of the godly, for the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. Praise the Lord. Almighty and eternal God, your Son, Jesus, calls us as his people and invites us to feast at his table. Grant us grace always to respond to his call and find our greatest joy in being at the Lord's table. This we ask through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
remain standing if you are able as we will sing our confession of faith. It is good for me that I was afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. We now reflect on God's word and our sin. We now confess to you, our Heavenly Father, that we are not worthy for you to come among us. We are indeed sinful and have transgressed against you in thought, word, and deed. Our actions have brought injury to others. We have left undone those things 
which we ought to have done. We have done those things which we ought not to have done. We sincerely repent of our sins, graciously hear our confession, and grant us your grace and forgiveness in Jesus Christ. By the work of your Holy Spirit within us, lead us to amend our sinful lives. Amen. Jesus, our Redeemer, promises forgiveness, life, and salvation, and welcomes us to his table as a called and ordained servant of Christ. And by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading this morning comes from Hosea chapter 5, beginning at the 15th verse. I will return again to my place till they acknowledge their offense. Then they will seek my face. In their affliction, they will earnestly seek me. Come and let us return to the Lord, for he has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up that we may live in his sight. Let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and the former rain to the earth. O Ephraim, what shall I do to you? O Judah, what shall I do to you? For your faithfulness is like a morning cloud, and like the early dew it goes away. Therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets, and I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and your judgments are like that light that goes forth. For I desire mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading this morning is from Romans chapter 4, beginning at the 13th verse. For the promise that he would be the heir of the word was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if those who are the law are heirs, faith is made void and promises are made of no effect, because of the law brings forth about, brings about wrath. For where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace." so that the, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those are the law, but also to those who are the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations, in the presence of him who he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope and hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be, and not be weak in faith. He did not consider his own body already dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not wa waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore, it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory be to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office. He said to him, follow me. So he arose and followed him. Now it happened, as Jesus sat at the table in the house, that, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard that, he said to them, 
Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated. And at this time, I invite any children we have to come forward for this morning's children's message. and girls. How are you? Okay, does everybody feel well? Yes. yes. Okay. Because if you weren't feeling well, who would you need to maybe go see? You would maybe need to go see a doctor. And doctors have things like this. What's this? A stethoscope. A stethoscope. I won't ask you to spell it. <laughs> but what does it do? <laughs> okay, we're doing the spelling bee. This is a stethoscope. And do you know where this normally goes? And then the doctor listens to your heartbeat to make sure your heart is beating okay. And maybe you feel a little chilly. And if you feel really chilly, what does the doctor use? Um, ah, very good. He uses the thermometer. Have you ever had one of these? It goes right here, doesn't it? No? No, it doesn't go there. Where does it go? It goes in your mouth. And it takes your temperature to see if you have a fever. Because if you have a fever, the doctor might give you a what? <laughs> a prescription, some medicine. And the medicine should hopefully make you feel better. That's right. In today's gospel reading... Jesus talks about being a physician. Do you think he came to fix a broken leg? A fever? To listen to your heart? Jesus cares about all of those things for sure, and he does do some miracles, and he heals some people. But most importantly, Jesus came for those who had sin, for people who broke the rules that God put down. Do you ever break the rules? Yeah, pastor breaks the rules. And when we break the rules, we confess. That means we tell the truth about what we did so that we can receive forgiveness. That's what we do in church every time we get here. We say to Jesus, the physician of our hearts and our souls, we are sorry. And what does Jesus give us when we say we're sorry? Begins with an F. Forgiveness. Yes, I give you fish to remind you that you're fishers of men. And I suppose Jesus gives the fishermen fish when they go fishing. But when we ask God for forgiveness, our God loves us so much that he's willing to forgive. And that's the message that we take from here each week and we tell our moms and our dads and our brothers and our sisters and our family and our friends and everyone we meet how good and great God is because he's the physician of our souls. So now you get a fish. Please join in singing. <laughs> Gift of grace is Jesus, my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness, and freedom, and steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I
The night is dark, but I am not forsaken. For by my side, the Savior, He will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing, for in my need, His power is displayed. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As mentioned earlier, we're in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9. The call of the disciple Matthew, Levi, as he's known. And as always, context is important. I know the world today loves the, the one-liners. We try to take the majesty and the wisdom and the love of God and wrap it up into 140 characters. Maybe we can cover it all in a one-minute TikTok. Not quite. If it encourages you and it's a Bible verse and it helps you through your day, I, I think that's wonderful. But we want to be careful recognizing when we study the Scriptures that we keep everything in its proper context to understand what's going on. Otherwise, there can be a lot of confusion that happens. We know that in the gospel reading today and from the prophet Hosea, God says something quite odd. He says, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. That might lead someone to go, so why are there all of those boring chapters I had to study through confirmation and such on all of the sacrifices that God commanded his people to do? 
Well, when you begin to understand the fuller context, it starts to make a lot more sense. In chapter 9, it begins with Jesus getting into a boat, crossing over, and coming to his own city. And they brought a paralytic to him on a bed. He said, Son, be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven. Our pericope for today follows on the heels of this, and this is the very spot where Jesus forgives sins. And of course, when the scribes hear that, they say within themselves, this man blasphemes. What they were getting at is they understood that even though we sin against one another, ultimately God is the one who gave us the law. He's the one that says we ought to love our neighbor as ourselves. He's the one who says love him above all else. So all of our sins, ultimately we might owe one another an apology, but ultimately we have to confess our sins to God, our Heavenly Father, for breaking His law, and He is faithful and just, and He will forgive us. But forgiveness comes from God, doesn't it? So if Jesus is saying your sins are forgiven, He's claiming to be God. He said, why do you think this in your hearts? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, He said, arise, take up your bed, and go home. And he did. And as Jesus passed on from there, our reading for today, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office, and he said, follow me. So he arose and followed after him. Jesus now moves towards the shore, and he sees a customs booth. Uh, 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 the area he was at was a seaport in a highly traveled area. And I dare say that we're not the first people you've Heard the Bible saying, right, there's nothing new under the sun. That's a good one-liner for you to remember. No, nothing man can invent or think about hasn't already be, been thought about somewhere along the lines when it comes to human psychology and understanding. Certainly they didn't have computers back in the day, but what I'm talking about is human nature doesn't change. So when you come to a bridge and there's a person sitting there and they go, we're not the first people to think about this. <laughs> I-80 is not new. <laughs> the road might be, but the idea that someone sits there and goes, where's your easy pass, give me some cash, that's very common. And I'm sure all of you this morning cannot wait to get a letter in the mail having filed your taxes that you're going to be audited. Don't you love the tax man? Can't wait to sit down with these very nice people who are gonna scrutinize all of my spending. We don't like taxes. We don't like the tax man. They have a job to do. But ultimately, in the days of Jesus, the tax collectors were working for a foreign government. And if your name is Levi and you're a Jew, now you're working and associating and being willing to aid and abet this Roman government. So you already weren't very well liked. And then if you were a strict Pharisee, who obeyed God's law, well, God's law said you couldn't have dealings with Gentiles. And if you're sitting there at the tax booth collecting taxes from everybody coming off of the seaport, now you're dealing with fishermen. And when you have seaports, you also have what? Mermaids. <laughs> well, not really mermaids, but houses of ill repute, we could say. So if you've ever hung around the fishermen and the unsavory kinds of sorts, and then you had to be a tax collector dealing with all of these people who were like, wait a minute, we're checking your cargo and we're taxing you on it before you pull it off the boat, you begin to realize and see how the religious elite would not have been overly joyed that Jesus actually spoke to, talked with, and then went one step further and sat down at a meal. But before we get to the meal part of it, I want you to notice something. Jesus said in verse 9, Follow me. So we arose and followed him. I want you to think about God saying to Abraham, because he was all in our Romans reading, Abram, 
that was his name before it was changed, I want you to leave the land that you are currently in, Ur of the Chaldees, and go to the land that I'm going to show you. Abraham grabbed his stuff and said, okay, lead on. When Jesus called some other disciples, they immediately left their nets and followed after Jesus. Now, there are examples in the Scripture of people who resist a little bit. We were just covering Moses this morning, and Moses said, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm slow of speech. I can't do it. He kept resisting God, and you know, Gideon asked for a sign. And there, there are some of those too, but in all of these examples, what I would like for you to receive as the message is that God can supply the talent, but what He can't do is supply the willingness. For the past few weeks, I've been really kind of talking about how God is very relational. Within the Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit, there's a relationship. And if we understand the way God works, and even the way He works with His creation, us, He works in relationship. And you can't force willingness. You can't force love. It seems that as I read from Genesis to Revelation, the one thing that God won't do is force anyone to be in relationship with Him. He just won't do it. There has to be something that we are willing to do. Now, you can force compliance. Don't get me wrong. If you disobey God enough, He can bring the hammer and He can force compliance. Kind of like with your children. You can make them clean their rooms. Even your spouse. You can make them do things. But how well does that work? It doesn't work well at all. When love is given freely for the benefit of another, when, when things are done and acts of service are done simply because you love and want to do it, it changes the whole atmosphere, doesn't it? See, God won't force anyone to love Him. If people don't want to love Him, it breaks His heart. But He won't force them to love Him. He'll just accomplish His will. Matthew followed. He left the tax booth and went on his way. And it happened as Jesus sat at table in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with Him and His disciples. See, they found a teacher who was willing to sit with them instead of push them away, the unsavory. When the Pharisee saw it, he said, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and with sinners? When Jesus heard it, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. I didn't come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. Jesus left off the last part of that Hosea passage. Do you remember what it said? It talked about the knowledge of the Lord, because we know that the knowledge of the Lord and knowing who God is and having relationship with Him changes absolutely everything, doesn't it? It changes absolutely everything. It's not that God didn't command the sacrifices. He did. It's not that they weren't to give the sacrifices they were supposed to, but when you understand the context of the larger thing that is going on, you have a group of Pharisees who were perfectly capable of doing all of the right things. They knew the prayers to say, they knew the sacrifices to give, and they did it. But did they do it out of a heart that loved or out of a heart that sought the praise of men? Now, maybe sometimes it was out, out of a heart of love, but we know from the many other examples in the Scriptures the times when they would give their alms simply so that everyone could go, wow, look at that Pharisee. They would say these amazing prayers so that they could be seen by men. And everybody would go, oh, did you hear Rabbi Schmeckelstein pray yesterday? It was marvelous. It was the most wonderful thing. 
I can't believe I was in the presence of the rabbi. And they loved that praise. How terrible it is that the people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. How terrible it is that we serve begrudgingly. How terrible it is that we love unwillingly. See, that's what Jesus was getting at. Everything belongs to the Lord. There's nothing we can give to the Lord out of our earthly treasures or even the movements of our hands or the words in our mouth that doesn't already belong to God. But God wants the one thing that only we are able to give Him, and that's our heart. He can't take that from us. That's His gift to us, that we willingly return unto Him in love and adoration, seeing that He loved us first. He reached down in our sickness and in our need first to rescue us from ourselves. And when you see that kind of love, well, one of two things happens. Either a grateful heart reaches out and says, God, save me, love me, bring me into your presence, sit down and eat with me as you did the elders and Moses in the days of old. Bring me into your fellowship. I want to be at your banqueting table. Or you say, thanks, but no thanks. You check the box that says, can't make it, got other things going on. The Scriptures are replete with all of those different examples, aren't they? Of people who were invited and they said no. Of people that God has loved and they said no thanks of miracles that were done right before their very eyes, and they said, you're messing up the system. You're ruining the flow. We got things going on. Those people can stay over there, and the divisions and the self-righteousness and the praise of man continues on. So God teaches quite clearly that He didn't come to call the righteous it's not that there's anybody in the world who doesn't need the grace of God and the love of Jesus. But if you're going to sit there and think that you're more righteous than the next guy, if you're going to say, I thank you, Heavenly Father, I'm not like that guy over there, if you're going to love the praise of men more than the love of your Heavenly Father, Jesus has nothing to do with you. He came to call sinners to repentance of which St. Paul says he's chief. I won't argue with him. I'm pretty sure I run a close second. And if that's how you feel, please come to the table. Please come and sit with Christ at his table where there's grace and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Ah, man. from the lips of children. Amen. Praises to our Lord. Please rise as we continue with the prayer of the church. O oh Lord God, our Heavenly Father, it is you who strike down and you who lift up. Though we justly deserve your wrath for our many sins, we pray that you would always revive us and raise us up, that we might live before you forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh, Almighty God, you desire steadfast love and that your people would know you. Bless pastors and teachers, all church workers, that your word would sound forth in abundance. Open the ears of all who hear to acknowledge your steadfast love and be also with those who work this weekend to prepare for our Synod's Convention. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh, Father in heaven, by your grace, Abraham trusted your promises. Strengthen parents to persist in their callings training their children in your word and in your ways. Defend them from discouragement and apathy and convince them that you are able to do all that you have promised. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O creator of all things, you call into existence what does not exist and govern it for our good. Remember those that you have given authority among the nations, that the laws they administer might reflect your order and maintain peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Heavenly Father, your Son came to heal the sick and to forgive sinners. Hear our prayers for those who suffer in any way, including Dawn, Steve Jr., Cindy Kent's mother, Troy and family, and Christine. Restore them according to your gracious will. Strengthen their faith in your faithfulness and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Almighty God, your Son, ate with sinners, calling them into righteousness, and now feeds us this day in his holy supper, that we too might be forgiven. Prepare our hearts to partake of the sacrament of the altar with penitence and with faith, and so depart in righteousness and peace according to your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Father, receive our thanks for your kindness shown to Abraham, Sarah, to Ron Padraki, and all of the saints who've gone before us. Preserve us in true faith and in righteousness that we too might receive the crown of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It is truly good, right, and proper that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, because your mercy attends us all our days, in mercy you provide for our wants of body and soul and graciously invite us to come to your Son's table, granting us a foretaste of the feast to come. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, praising you now and forevermore. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also when they had supped, he took the cup. Again he had given thanks. He gave it to them saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you.
give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, and His mercy endures forever. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we who have sung Your praise in this sanctuary may glorify You out in the world. Allow the ears of those who hear Your word to receive it with joy, and leave behind the voices of clamor and dispute. May those who have here confessed Your truth ever speak it through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
and with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee, be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for just a couple of quick announcements. The first is our very own Nora. Um, you might have recognized her from her wonderful singing. And that great picture is still collecting pop tabs, correct? Yes. In case you didn't get to see it, when you asked St. Mark for something, I saw a picture and uh, she could barely hold the bag. There were so many in it. Uh, St. Mark always comes through. So thank you for your support. If you have more pop tabs, just go ahead and bring them in to support the Ronald McDonald House, uh, which provides space uh, for folks who need it. Next, Sunshine Seniors, today is the last day to sign up. If you are looking to paint one of the vases coming up this Saturday, please make sure you sign up so they'll have enough materials for you. Also, if you're interested in heading to Lancaster for their trip to see the miracle of Christmas, please sign up sooner rather than later. Reason being is they have to secure a bus uh, to get everyone there, so they have to have numbers so they know the prices, and they can figure all of that out. If you have any questions, please contact the church office. All family and friends are welcome. Lastly, thank you for every time you volunteer to help out for food for the soul, that's what we call it. We head up to Trinity in Cleveland, and we bring them goodies, and we provide fellowship around a table uh, for those who can use it most. So if you're able to donate some food, cook some food, or even go up there and serve, it is a wonderful time and a blessed ministry to take part of. Sign-ups and stuff are out there. Of course, thank you to our children for their wonderful singing. Another round of applause for all of you guys. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. For our staff, our many volunteers, our musicians who make things so marvelous here at St. Mark, a heartfelt thanks to you. Thank you for all that you do. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. I love you, St. Mark. We look forward to seeing you soon. Oh, oh.